Welcome to Rocksaw Productions, where in this video we are going to show you how to update the firmware on the Hyperkin Admiral, Scout, and Cadet Bluetooth controllers so you can use them with your Switch. Stay tuned. Welcome to Rock Solid Productions. My name is Gary, your host here on the channel. And if this is your first time here, I just want to take a second and say thanks for stopping by and checking out our tutorial that we have here today. I hope you find it helpful and useful. If you like what you see here, I invite you to check out some of the other videos that we have on our channel, including unboxings and reviews of all three of these controllers we're going to talk about today. And if you really like what you see, do me a huge favor. Hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification, and let me know down in the comments out of the N64, the Super NES, and the NES, which one to you had the best controller? For me, I loved the Super NES controller. I thought it was just amazing, and I'm glad to see its legacy living on in the PS4 and potentially the PS5, so very cool there. Recently, Hyperkin announced a new firmware update for these three controllers in a really simple and easy process to go ahead and update the firmware on all three controllers and what we're going to show you today is how to actually go ahead and update these firmware on all three of these and we're going to test this out a little bit let's get started the first thing that you have to do is download the software and everything that you need to install the new firmware into your controllers for that all that I'm going to do is I'm going to search for the Bluetooth Scout so B L U E T O O T H S C O U T as you can see I have just typed it once because yeah Anyways, so hit uh, hit search, and there you have it. And now from this page, I can see the different Scout controllers that are available. I want this guy here. This is the premium Bluetooth controller for the Super NES, PC, Mac, and Android. Not to be confused with the 2.4 gigahertz version for the Super NES Classic Edition. So note that they are different. 2.4 gigahertz here. This is Bluetooth, so we're going to go into this one. As we scroll down, we can see right here, download firmware update for Nintendo Switch and Switch Lite. Click on to that, and it'll take you to, and I'll put this link in a pin post, but you'll end up on a page that's hyperkin.com slash VT controller update. And as you can see, this will update for the, uh, the Scout, the Admiral, and the Cadet. So the first thing you need to do download the software. Now that I have the firmware downloaded, I have it in its own separate folder here. When you initially click on the file to open and run the EXE, you may get a, a warning from Windows. So if you do happen to get this warning pop up, the easy way to get around this issue uh, is to go ahead and click the more info section here. And underneath there, you will see it will say app Hyperkin upgrade tool version with the version ID number there, publisher unknown publisher. The unknown publisher is probably what's causing the issue. So click run anyways, and it will start running it on your computer. So now that we have the firmware and everything installed, we need to go ahead and connect our controller. And this is probably the trickiest part. First and foremost, make sure that you have a USB cable that is capable of sending and receiving data. That's important. Second of all, what you need to do is coordinate when you plug the USB cable into the controller and holding down the sync button on your controller. So we are going to select on here the Admiral as our controller. So boom, there's that. And we need to quickly press and hold the sync button while connecting our USB cables. We got everything lined up. It now says connected. You can see that right below here in the green. Now hit the button below. It should take about a minute. Do not disconnect your device. We have hit the go button. And there you can see the green status bar kind of going. We'll actually go through and do our Admiral, the Cadet, and the Scout. Oh, it failed. That's interesting. Let's try this one more time. So now all that I did was disconnect and reconnect it. I did not have to uh, hold the button down that time for it to recognize the Admiral. So we're going to try it again. I will tell you more than a little bit concerned that I bricked the controller when it had that error message come up there so hopefully we are okay there we go one thing i would say to uh, hyperkin on this firmware once the update is done this message should disappear from their upgrading tool just personal feedback as an end user 
So at this point, our Admiral has been updated. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab our uh, Scout. Select Scout from the menu there. There we go with the Scout. We'll update that firmware. And as I mentioned earlier, I was having some issues with my Scout anyways, uh, getting it to pair to the regular dongle. So I'm hoping this firmware update helps take care of that in addition to adding the functionality to use it with Switch. And there you see, it is done. So now the only one that we have left is our Cadet. If you do connect it without selecting your controller, it can give you an error. So we are connected. Go, go, go. And just like that, it is done. So now let's connect these all up to our switch and see how they work. Now that we have the controllers updated, the next step, we have to pair them to our system. Now I ran through and initially paired them to my switch light, no problem whatsoever. But when I tried to pair them to my original switch hooked up to my TV here, I ran into lots of problems. They wouldn't pair. I was pulling what, well, what little hair that I have out because I couldn't figure it out. And I wondered, I wonder if you could only pair so many controllers to the switch. Aha, that's exactly what what it was so I had to actually uninstall and remove previous controllers that I had paired to my system I had nine controllers paired to this system wiped them all out started from scratch works perfectly so we're gonna walk you through this come down here to the controllers uh, tab here and we are going to change grip order now we are going to start with the scout and to do this, what you'll need to do is the pairing button is on top of the controller and then the A button. You'll press the pairing button first and then a split second later, we hit the A button and the LED here will blink a red and a blue. Here, we're gonna come closer so you can see close up focus what we're talking about. And once you get that rapid flashing light, you can let everything go. And then going to the screen on our switch, we should pair here in just a second. There it is. So now we have our Scout is paired. Check that, our Cadet is paired. We're gonna do the same thing. We'll come in close again. Here is our Scout. Focus. And pairing button in A. See the LED blinking there. We'll go back to our switch. And there we have our Scout is paired. You can see I'm hitting the buttons and it's making the controller bounce. The final one we're gonna pair is our Admiral. There'd be no whales here. But again, we're gonna come up here. On the Admiral, we can actually hit any of the buttons, uh, face buttons along with the pairing button. So press and press. You can see the lights are flashing red and blue down here. And in just a moment, looking at the screen, and just like that, the Admiral is now paired. Now, one different thing about the Admiral is depending on how you turn it on, there's a number of different profiles that you can actually have it power onto for button configuration. So, for example, if you do uh, the up C button uh, would be the home button on one of the profiles, or some of the other buttons are mapped differently too. Now, one thing about using the Cadet is the fact there is no home button, so you actually still have to have your Joy-Con or something like that near by if you want to change what you're playing. But I'm going to go ahead and we're going to play the NES for just a second here. Now the nice thing about this is these are, you know, $30 or less for either the Scout or the Cadet. I don't remember. I think the Admiral is about $50 off the top of my head. Compared to the OEM Nintendo 2-pack of NES online controllers, a lot less expensive. So let's go to, um, we'll just do some Donkey Kong real quick. Jump button works exactly as it should. I mean, this feels great. I have long really, really liked this controller and that was my own timing issue there. Now the problem here though is I can't get back to the main screen at all. I have to uh, use another controller to get back to where I was at. So now we're going to actually power off the cadet. So for this, I'm gonna actually have to grab my Joy-Con. So one downside on these versus like some of the 8-bit dough controllers uh, or even the, um, uh, the official controllers, there is no home button on here. 
we'll go home to that point. And we'll play some Super Mario Kart real quick. Again, I mean, I have always dug the, the ergonomics on these controllers and now the added functionality is just really, really good. Kind of hard to, to stand off to the side and play here, but that works pretty well there. Power that one off. And now we are gonna power back on the Admiral here. And again, now there I actually used the A button to turn it back on, so that meant that the C up button went ahead and that's my home button on here. Now the D-pad does work as, uh, as expected here. So yeah, that works quite well. I'm, you know, the pairing process took, you know, more time than it should have just due to the fact I had so many controllers already paired to the system. Um, I really do love the fact that I can use NES and Super NES style controls now if I'm playing the Super Nintendo Online or the NES Online collection. It really kind of makes it, it makes it feel more authentic and I really, really dig it. I do wish there was a way that we could do, um, you know, have a home I don't think we can, but let's double check here. Let's go here real quick in the system settings, change button mapping. So it looks like I cannot remap those that aren't like official Nintendo OEM controllers. Yeah, does not offer remapping. So I can't do like, you know, like I mentioned earlier, hack chi on, you know, where you can press down and select to get back to the home menu, not an option on here. Let me know what you think about the fact that you can now do this with the Hypercan Bluetooth controllers. I kind of wish they would have done this out of the box, uh, but I'm glad that they're going back and they're updating the functionality on legacy type product. They don't have to do it at all, and they are doing it here, which is really, really cool. Again, I love the ergonomics. These are my go-to controllers, at least for the NES and the Super NES, uh, when I am playing my original OEM systems, and I can still use these on those systems. I just repair when I go from one to the next and to the next and back and forth. Um, pairing on these guys, much, much easier than it was for some reason on the Admiral. Um, probably, you know, either too much RF noise in this room. This is, you know, pretty much a Faraday cage just about uh, it, where I'm at here. Um, but I am glad that I am able to go ahead and do this. And like I mentioned earlier, not only does it work with the original Switch and the V2, it does also work. I did test it out. Works just fine with the Switch Lite. So you can add that action, added functionality to your Switch Lite if you so desire. Does this make you want to pick one of these controllers up a little bit more than maybe before. The fact that you now have the added functionality that it can work with the Switch. It didn't before. That was one of my biggest criticisms about the Admiral. It didn't work with the Switch. Now it does. So that criticism, it's gone. Forget about it. It's like it never happened. The update process was actually pretty easy. The main thing is just the timing between holding down the pair button and then hitting the A button to go ahead and initiate that connection with your PC. Now everything I did was with a PC. I don't know if this will work with Mac because it was an EXE file. I would probably bet probably not. You'll probably need a PC to do this. Probably you know, a Chromebook would not work at all either. Now if you do have any comments or questions about anything that we've shown you here today or anything about these controllers as always feel free to leave a comment down below i want to know what is your favorite controller out of these three systems out of the nes super nes and n64 what's your personal favorite if you want to see our, our full-blown unboxing and reviews of each of these i will have those links down below in the more info section you've probably noticed them kind of popping up from time to time in the upper right hand corner of the screen here too now if you want to pick up any of these controllers you can do so by heading on over to castlemaniagames.com and the cool thing over there is they have a feature called castle cash where the more you spend the more you earn towards future purchases and the great thing too with that is it's just like cash there's no um, you know they don't expire they, there's no exclusions if you've got 20 bucks in castle cash you have $20 to spend at the castle now you can also use promo code rocksolid10 to save you 10% off of most items on the website now if you do have any other comments or questions in 
in addition to the comments down below, you can also email me at rocksolidmail at gmail.com. You can visit us over on our Twitter page at Rock Solid Studios. We're over on Facebook at facebook.com slash rocksolidproductions and on Instagram at instagram.com slash rocksolidproductionsgk. Now, if you want to help support the future of Rock Solid Productions so we can get new mics, new lights, new accessories that we can feature and show you how to make the most out of your gaming, you can do so in a couple of different ways. First and foremost, head on over to our Teespring store on screen right now where we have t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, and more all designed with the Rock Solid Productions logo on a different retro style cartridge. I've got some new designs I'm going to be playing with in the near future too. You can also join us over on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash rocksolid. For as little as a dollar a month, $12 a year, you get exclusive access to our content early, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. And everything we raise through Teespring, through Super Chat, through Patreon, gets invested right back here on the channel. So we can do cool things like tutorials like this, get new microphones, get new lights and everything, and try to make this rock solid community, well, even more rock solid. I do appreciate it. Now, like I mentioned at the top of this video, if you like what you see here, if you want to see more, if you really want to help us grow and continue to build things here, do me a huge favor. Hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that bell notification. It really does make a huge difference. Uh, Hyperkin, I appreciate the fact that you have updated your legacy product. Nintendo, playing the Nintendo Online and the Super NES Online games now are going to be that much better. These controllers are comfortable, they've got great battery life, good responsiveness, overall a really good product, at least personally for me, the Scout and the Cadet. These are how I prefer to play my regular NES and Super NES, so I am glad I can now use them with my Switch. I am Gary, this has been Rock Solid Productions, and our look at how to update the firmware on Hyperkin controllers to use them with the Switch. I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in our next video.